Sorban and Protocol 20 are set to roll out in a week, February 20th to be exact. Will we see any price action with that move? Speaking of price action, we're going to talk about XLM and just not being able to break out of this 11 cent mark, along with getting you caught up to date on where Stellar is. That's right, they're in Africa, blockchain, ecosystem. Starting it off with your comments, you matter most. WM78 says, now with the harvest time is near, so withdrawing your investment in 2024 would be a big mistake. How many years of waiting have passed for many believers? Let's be honest. There have been much better options on the market in recent years. Some people's belief in XRP is almost sectarian. Well said there, WM78. Bitcoin sitting at 51644 Going to ride this bad boy as far as we can. E2741, she's coming alive. Soul is making the waves at 116. XRP53, two, only up 2.3% last 24 hours. ADA, fear not, up 6.3%. XLM just struggling in the 11s. But the good news is, XLM has not gone down as far as other ones, though. But right next to XLM is, say, up 18% last 24 hours. Tau up 8.7. ICP looking healthy yet again, 13.46. We're officially less than one week out from Protocol 20 vote on February 20th. You know, 20 on 20. Hey, there you go. Which will bring smart contracts to the Stellar Network. Protocol 20 will mark the most transformative upgrade to the Stellar Network to date. As always, any article you see in this video, as long as the other ones, will be linked in the description below. All right. Protocol 20 vote on the 20th. Are we going to see any price action leading into it? Well, I mean, the whole market has kind of rebounded here over the last couple weeks. But Exxon, not as much laggard in that effect. And, and that's where people's frustrations are. But we're not we're not going to talk about that just yet. We're going we're gonna to keep learning. Stellar. This year is all about connecting with the Stellar ecosystem. Understanding their needs and collaborating to tackle real-world challenges. First Stellar Africa ecosystem stop complete. Accra, you set the bar high for what will be an amazing week. They're talking about Stellar Africa going out and hanging out with several African countries on blockchain dev. So you got the crew out there in Africa. Africa hanging out. You got Soroban six days away. And then you got this monstrosity up on the screen. It's comparing BTC to XLM over the last six months. BTC is up 75%. XLM is down 17. Smart contracts coming around the bend, but it doesn't look like any price action is happening from that smart contract move. Now, does this mean there will be no price action for it? Hey, maybe it'll come later. But what people are upset with is why is BTC just climbing so much while Exxon just can't get out of its way? I'm gonna go to the one month chart here on Exxon and I want you to see this range bound within that 11 cent mark. It's how it's been for a while. Let's zoom out just that little bit further. Okay, we touched 13 a few times. That's healthy from the 11 cent mark, right? I mean, we're getting close to 20% oomph in that. But it didn't hold. It didn't hold on the market ETF pump. It did not hold on all the other news. And in fact, has worked its way down. You go to the six month here and you're telling yourself we're at 11.2, but it was 13.5 six months ago. So we're down 20%. We zoom out a year more and we're like, you know what though? The good news is we're holding a good chunk of our gains from the Taurus pump. That is actually good news. So for those of you out there that say, bro, you don't bring any good news. Well, I think you just don't can watch or you don't listen. Because... XLM holding more of its Taurus gains is, is better percentage performance than XRP holding its Taurus gains. That's messed up, and XRP benefited directly from that. So look at that, pre-Taurus, we're at 9.6. So we're obviously up from that mark. That's the one-year chart, and we're up from the real, real bad times here. Look at that, 7.7 .7 cents, another 7.7 .7 little double bottom right there. Zoom out to the two-year, and then the pain train starts coming. 
where we start looking at prices that a lot of us are thinking ain't going to happen anytime soon. And why are we thinking that? It's not because we're being negative. It's because Bitcoin is stealing the thunder. I mean, look at it. Look at the move here. This is the six-month move, right? Look at how much more oomph BTC has achieved in that six-month time versus Exelon. Change your time period out to the two-year time period. Exelon down 42%, BTC up 34 Change it to the one year, BTC up 132, Exelon 31. That's not bad, but it's not 132. Zoom in closer to the three month, right? Let's zoom in for the new viewers of the channel. BTC up 45%, Exelon down 4.2. Go to the month, and this is why people are getting upset because the BTC move is not pulling XLM with it. XLM is looking more and more like a laggard in the market. And where people are getting upset is that they're seeing the moves with other coins and tokens out there. ICP moving big. What about Caspa? Ben hit us up yesterday in the live stream. Thank you to everyone that watched. Ben hit us up said, bro, I got rid of a ton of XLM and I moved into Caspa. Dude, my man is up on the action. There are some winners out there. All right, we talked about ICP a dunch. We talked about Solana looking healthy yet again. Now you do have smart contracts coming up in six days. You got Stellar hanging around in Africa, spreading the blockchain goodness. But it's not yielding anything for the XLM price, is it? Now, in the meantime, BTC is ripping and roaring. And when we compare the two, I don't give a shit what time frame you're looking at. It don't look good. Even on the five day, I'm trying to find a good chart and I can't. You're like, bro, why are you comparing it to BTC? That ain't fair because we compare ourselves to first place. So winners are made. You don't compare yourself to to 10th place. You know, how, how am I doing compared to the middle of the pack? You have that kind of attitude. That's a loser's attitude. Compare yourself to the leaders and BTC is the market leader. And right now that market leader over the last two years is up 34% while XLM is down 42%. Apples to apples. Well, guess what? Why compare yourself to people that are just like you compare yourself to people that are better than you. So you work harder to become even better. You want to be a big fish in a small pond? Ooh, have fun with that. No, go in a big pond, play with the big fish, and see how you stack up. Compare yourself to the best. Now look, you want to give me the story about, oh, bro, we just got to wait. Oh, bro, it's just we're waiting for this. Other things aren't waiting. Diversification is the key. I've been telling everyone for the last two years that XLM has been a laggard. And we've seen that happen time and time again. Now, development with smart contracts. Is that good? Yes, I think that's really good. That is super smart. Do I dig the technology with XL and what you can do with it? Yeah, you bet your butt I can. But let's be real here. When it comes to making the paper company, right, with what you put in your pockets, what you pay your bills with, it it's... Very few opportunities with XLM. You had to have gotten into it, into that 2023 period where things are really crappy. Otherwise, you're sitting on a losing hit. And the worst part is, is we're seeing BTC, ICP, Soul, uh, Render, I mean, it's a whole bunch of them out there making big, big moves. Are they doing as much blockchain development as... Is that what people care about? Do they care about utility? Do they care about the idea of moving money? Do they care about building blockchain stuff in Africa? The investors out there are telling us no. Klaus, you're being mean. Klaus, you're being harsh. No, I'm telling you right now that when you compare XLM to the best, just like we all should in our own lives, you want to compare yourself to, to an average parent? That sounds good. You want your kids to be the best, right? You want the best for your kids. Average? Okay, cool. Average is fine. This channel is an average? Hell no. You aim for the top, you want to be the top, and you want to retain the top. And if you're not there, you compare yourself to the top.
I had a great time yesterday in the live stream. And I'm having a really good time reading all your comments. A lot about them being about diversification. Now I get there's going to be some maxis in the comment. And those maxis, they're going to sit here and go, Bro, you're an idiot. Bro, you're, bro, look at the fucking charts, man. Like, you, you can't keep sitting here for two years and going, Adoption this. Adoption that. Oh, wait till this. Wait till that. Is that what you do with your favorite sports team? Right? Is that what you do when your team sucks year after year after year and other teams are making big moves and you're not? You're like, eh, it's cool. We're at the bottom of the pack. Who cares? I love being at the bottom. That's what losers say. You want to be at the top. You want to be a shark. You want to be hungry. So shout out to people out there getting the vibe of this channel. I greatly appreciate you. Man, was it hard trying to find a chart, though, that looked good when we compared it to the top. That's not a good sign. Catch cool cats later. Forced recovery days?